Hi everybody, Kai Waza with you. Welcome back to my channel and through uh, our journey through my Hawaiian record collection, about 2,500 Hawaiian records and we're uh, going through it one record at a time, just showing it. Uh, we are on the letter M uh, today and I'm going to pick up where we left off on our last video. Um, the first record I have today in my collection to show is actually one I want to talk about a little bit uh, because it is like a very important album to me. Um, I'm not going to say necessarily rare or highly collectible. I see it every so often now, much more than I used to, but with the internet and eBay and all that I do seem to see this record uh, coming up every so often. Um, but uh, for me, this record goes way back to my childhood, and my I didn't have it as a child. Uh, when I was a little kid living in upstate New York, uh, my neighbors down the street, the Decipios, had two records, Hawaiian records, uh, Billy Vaughn's Blue Hawaii, we haven't talked about the V's yet, so, and this record. And I really loved both of them. And I used to, as a little kid, little kid, I used to borrow them. I would go down to their house and ask if I could borrow one of those two records. And I would have it for a week or something and take it back. So, um, of course, this was, like I said, this was in the late 60s, early 70s. So you're talking about, you know, no internet and, and like if a, re a record store didn't have it, you just didn't have an opportunity to own it. So I never had an opportunity to have my own copy of it uh, until much, much later. But, wow, I loved this record. Um, it's called Music of the Islands, and it's by the Mauna Loa Islanders, which is a studio group. I mean, there was no real group going around performing called uh, the Mauna Loa Islanders. It's on RCA... Uh, Victor Records. It's from 1959, so it was recorded in the year of uh, that Hawaii became a state. Uh, why do I love this record? I love this record for several reasons. Um, reason number one, I will go on record. People are always asking me, like, what's your favorite record and what's your favorite album cover and blah, 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 blah. I will go on record as saying this is probably my favorite album cover of all time in Hawaiian records. Although I do prefer the mono version of it, which I have, because you can see a little more of the picture. This picture is everything to me. This is amazingly beautiful. She is amazingly beautiful. The photograph is amazingly beautiful. I'm sure they had lighting and whatever to just make it like capturing that moment of sunset or whatever, but it's amazing. Uh, I love that she's very exotic looking. It's great. Uh, and I do not know who this is. I've never seen her on any other record covers or pictures. I do think, though, I've found her in another book. This is a book. Old textbook on Hawaii, and I think this is her here. What do you think? You think so? I think it is. You know, it looks a little different, but the hair, everything, I think, I think it's her in a different setting. Anyway, the other reason I love this record is because it is amazing music. <laughs> it's amazing. Not one, not two, there's three steel guitars um, in this group and they have some whacked out great arrangements and some very exotic arrangements. Um, a lot of reverb which just makes the record have that sort of distant sound. There's so much good music on this record to me. This also would be a desert island disc for me. Love this record so, so much.
has the most killer version of On the Beach at Waikiki ever of any of them. Any of the hundreds of versions, this one, killer. Um, killer My Little Brass Shack, killer Hakai Mayro Counter Kakai, insane little brown gal. This record's insane. Um, and as far as me having it, I never had it for years and years and years, and I never found it until I was in college going to school in Hawaii. And my story is, um, I'm so psychically connected to this record, like I wanted it so much. Um, I was at a record store, this is back in like 82, 83, something like that, at a record store that used to be on Kapuhulu. It's not there anymore, and it was kind of underground. You had to walk down to a stairs. And one day, uh, and I didn't go to a lot of record stores back then like I do now, but um, I was standing on the top of the stairway. It was the weirdest thing. I was standing on the top of the stairway, looking down at the record shop. I couldn't really, I just knew it was down there. I couldn't see anything. And I had this feel, it, this total feeling it just came over me. It was like, oh my God, music of the islands by the Mauna Loa Islanders is in this shop. I know it. I can feel it. I, and I walked down the stairs. It was the weirdest thing. Walked down the stairs into the door. Right, I had never been in that store before. Right to the Hawaiian record section. Opened up. Just pulled back the records to the middle of the, the Hawaiian pile. And there it was. And it was $20, which is the most I had ever paid for a record at that point. And I got it immediately. Like, is that weird? It's so weird. Anyway, if you love steel guitar and exotic arrangements and kind of funky arrangements, this this album is cannot be beat. It cannot. Then they did, okay, I've spent like the whole video talking about one record. Uh, then they did a follow-up in 1961. Um, um, I suspect this actually was taken at the same session because I think that's probably the same shell and it's probably her, or whatever. But anyway, Hawaiian Punch. No. <laughs> There's a couple songs that are good, but this one not nearly as good. And it's really the production. It doesn't have the reverb. It doesn't have the the distant Bali highness that the music of the islands has. This one was just produced differently, and it's just not as good. I mean, it's the same musicians. It is, but it's. Mm -mm. Sorry, it's, I mean it's okay. It's it's just not. I mean that music, the islands. Oh, that's a desert island, man. That's a desert island disc. Here's one from 1979. The album is called Hawaiian Paradise. The group, the Mauna Malihini, Malahini. It should be Malihini people. The Mauna Malihini Islanders. Um, this one also has been put out on CD with a different name and different artists. I don't remember what they called it, but uh, this was put out on CD. A um, couple of steel guitars on it. One of them is a, a pedal steel guitar, and it does sound a little bit country at times. But um, there are some nice tracks on this album, and it's mostly original, mostly original compositions. <laughs> an older one on a CBS Records, but CBS Records out of uh, Germany? Germany, yeah. A group called the Maui Hawaiians. The Maui. It's not die Maui Hawaiians in English. That would be so rude. Um, Van Havana <laughs> bis Hawaii. From Havana to Hawaii. Um, this is, I, I think it's all instrumental, yeah, if I'm recalling. Instrumental steel guitar and music, very nice album, um, like an older style, really pretty, nice steel guitar playing. Now 
here's one, a uh, Hawaiian recording on Tradewinds Records that's available only in Hawaii, but there's nothing remarkable about that because all Tradewind Records were only available in Hawaii, but uh, Margaret Pang, who ran the company, always marketed them that way. She didn't sell them on the mainland or other places. They were only locally distributed. This is the Maui Hawaiians, and uh, it is... combination of like some vocal and some instrumental um, these guys are all actually employees of uh, Pascal's Grey Line Tour Company also known as the Pascal's Grey Line Troubadours recording here as the Maui Hawaiians and uh, they introduce on this album um, the accordion which is an instrument relatively new to Hawaiian music at the time and don't know that it was included in too much after this, either. Wrap it up with uh, <coughs> a record that comes out of Canada, although it was recorded here in Hawaii. This is part of the series. Uh, you may have seen some of these records come up under the different letters at times from the Sweet Sweet Steel Guitar series. This is uh, done on Maple Records out of Canada, the Sweet Sweet Steel Guitar series. This is number 16 in that series um, by Ed Mayer with guest vocals by Bob Fernandez and the uh, new Hawaiian, well, Ed Meyer featuring, or featuring Ed Meyer, whatever, the new Hawaiian minstrels, right? That's them. I think this is Fred Meyer, Ed, Fred Meyer, Ed Meyer, uh, but there's no, uh, there's nothing on the back that says who's who on this picture, but I would assume since he's in the middle, that's Ed Meyer. Steel guitarist, by the way. This was recorded in 1984, and uh, yeah, and we're gonna stop there. That's gonna wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more. If you want to check out uh, this kind of music, I do have an online radio station that's free to listen to. It's called Hawaiian Hi-Fi on live365.com and uh, it broadcasts in the United States in Canada and I'm happy to announce now it's also broadcasting in the United Kingdom so if you're in any of those three countries um, you can listen anytime that's Hawaiian Hi-Fi beautiful easy listening Hawaiian music 24 hours a day on live365 thanks for watching and uh, we'll catch you on the next video and let me know if you have any of these records or your thoughts about them. Okay? Thank you.